Today we're back to learn 10 more viral shin ramen recipes. Since we made our last video, the price stayed the same, but the packaging went from 5 packs to 4 packs, which is why I also got shin black. It has pretty similar flavors to regular shin, but you know, it's obviously bigger and better. Usually we leave it till the end, but today we're gonna have a creamy start. At first I thought it was individually packed cream cheese, but it turned out to be a brick. So we're gonna have to cut it up and store the pieces away. It will take 2 tablespoons or so from a block, a quarter cup of milk, I got this myself, my dad's still out getting it. Putting our seasoning and vegetable packet and move on to the stove. While the noodles are cooking, we'll just put the heat on low and melt the cream cheese into the milk. It should become sort of like a creamy, spicy cheese sauce. Now all we have to do is put in the noodles and stir it till it's evenly combined. I know you love it, so here's some of the sound for you. There's no macaroni, so I guess we have to call it shin ramen cheese. Sounds kind of boring. Looks really good though. Also, instant noodles and cheese is a classic combo. Can't go wrong with it. So let's give it a taste and rate it on 13. The acidity and creaminess of the cream cheese perfectly balances with the spicy seasoning. Somehow these two tablespoons of cream cheese is even cheesier than when I boiled ramen in cheese last time. Very flavorful, tastes like a perfectly made spicy mac and cheese, so 8.6 out of 10. Definitely better than the American cheese topping. At first I was a little skeptical too, but apparently a lot of people online tried it and raved about it. And it doesn't get any easier than this, so we're starting with a clean pot of boiling water, putting our patties and dropping the noodle patty. Kinda feels like witchcraft right now. I'm still a little bit skeptical. Once the noodles are cooked, we'll take it out. It's probably the easiest recipe we've ever done on this channel. To make it a little more complex, I wanted to add a fried egg. And as you guys can see, my streak of not being able to cook a single egg still continues. I feel like I can use this to scrub the sink. After putting scallions on there to give character, let's give it a taste. The addition of acidity and sweetness is a nice contrast to the spiciness, but it's very subtle. It tastes like somebody accidentally dropped a tomato into the soup. I think it's a 5 out of 10 because I like the original flavor of the packet, but if you want to change things up a little bit, it's worth trying. Since we already started our exploration with condiments, our next recipe is going to heavily rely on Agavisa Conchins to Kewpie Mayo. After cooking the noodles off camera, we'll add in a little bit of the noodle water, half a packet of the seasoning, and just a little bit of oyster sauce. When the noodles soak up all the liquid, dump it onto a plate and literally just cover it up with like a visit just to keep mayo. A little dusting of the packet and sprinkle a lot of this seaweed seasoning thing. This dish is trying to imitate the Japanese street food dish, okonomiyaki. But no matter how much you look at it, it's just mayo covered noodles. I guess everybody is so creative after all. Let's give it a taste and rate it 1 through 10. I'm not a big fan of mayonnaise to begin with, so it kind of makes me want to throw up. I wouldn't try this unless you really want to. I picked the recipe today only because it looked cool. This recipe is a leftover hack. It works best in one of those instant noodle cups. It's designed for people who already finished the noodle with some broth left in the cup and they're still feeling hungry, but not hungry enough for another cup. This is very relatable because I've never been able to go for a second round. The solution to that problem is we're gonna crack in two eggs into the broth. Beat it together with a pair of chopsticks. You can beat it on the couch if you want. Cover with wet paper towel and into the microwave for four minutes. Time to unveil my bride. Aw, she's ugly. It looks a little thorough -y. It's really jiggly. I never judge food before I taste it, but the yellow water pulling in the center is putting me off a lot. Time to give it a taste. I have to publicly apologize to this steam egg because it's incredible. It's extremely flavorful and it melts in your mouth. It's like a savory pudding or a creme brulee for the insane. Taste-wise, maybe 7 out of 10, but as a hack, especially dealing with leftover broth, definitely a 9 out of 10. If you're eating instant noodles, might as well get some protein in. I'm using a more expensive cut here because it's more prone to me messing up. After slicing up beef and onions, we'll sear it up on a pan. 
when the surface brown will take them out. Now you see all this left in the pan is undesirable, so we're gonna wash it off. Just kidding again, we'll use the moisture from the onions to deglaze it. You also want to turn the heat down a little bit so it evenly caramelizes. I don't know why, but no matter how hard I scrape or put water in it, the fond won't come off. And it keeps getting darker. Is it my problem or the pans? But anyways, we're gonna switch to the off-brand hex cloud we got for the fried rice video for half price in the back alley of Chinatown. We're using black pepper sauce here. It's basically teriyaki, less sweet, more acidic, and more black peppery. We'll toss it a little bit to get the wok hay. The sauce is really salty, that's why we didn't season the steak earlier. A little bit of cooking wine for the aroma and lower the temperature. Finally, we'll toss in the noodles, mix everything together, and we're done. I think it looks pretty good. What do you think? From this angle, it looks like a bowl of dark meat. Well, that sounds like something I'm interested in. So. Steak and caramelized onions can pretty much make anything taste good. Let's give it a taste and rate it 1 through 10. I had this recipe recently at a restaurant when I was third whaling with my friend Victoria and Giovanni and they started this huge argument about whether black pepper sauce is from Italy or Hong Kong. I personally couldn't care less so I ate the whole thing myself. The flavorful and slightly acidic black pepper sauce works perfectly well with the caramelized onions and steak. It's perfect to go on top of noodles. 9 out of 10. Highly recommend. This recipe supposedly is the most efficient at saving dishes, because you eat it straight out of the pan. Take a saute pan and put a lot less water than you would and start cooking the noodles. You don't want to cook it all the way because we're steaming it later. Mm -hmm. For the seasoning packet, only put in half since there's less water. Now turn the heat to the lowest setting and crack one or two egg in the middle. Now cover the egg with cheese. I'm going with my never ending raclette. It's truly never ending. You guys will see soon. And cover the noodles with mozzarella because I kind of want to get the cheese pulled this time. Cover it up and steam for three minutes. If the egg is not cooked, give it another two minutes. The water should be fully absorbed and the cheese nicely melted. Garnish with scallion, a little bit of seasoning packet, and some chili flakes. I feel like steamed instant noodles look like they have more volume than the boiled ones. You know, sometimes I wonder when is this channel ever gonna get its first cheese pull scene. Let's give it a taste and rate it 1 through 10. Since the noodles are mostly steamed, the texture is a lot more chewy, which provides a good foundation for the cheese and the runny egg. On paper, this is just the normal shin ramen with egg and cheese. But with this method, it tastes unexpectedly different, sort of like a stir fry. You can also customize this a lot. I'll give it an 8 out of 10. I saw this recipe on TikTok a lot last year. It's basically just spicy rice cake sauce in ramen. So a tablespoon of gochujang, tablespoon of sugar, soy sauce, and gochugaru. And the recipe asks for toasted sesame seeds. I didn't toast mine, but you should. And some garlic oil. Mixed till it becomes a thick paste like this. I've never been able to boil an egg without the white stuff busting out. And just start cooking the noodles as usual, but use only half the seasoning packets. Also throw in some fish cakes and pour in our sauce. I just realized that the toasted sesame seeds might be for garnish. Well, I guess we're having boiled sesame seeds. Another problem is that this is way too much water. The sauce of spicy rice cake is supposed to be thick. So we're gonna have to turn up the heat and reduce it for a long time. I took the noodles out so they don't get overcooked. I reduced it for 30 minutes. Now I'm gonna have to live with the smell for 3 days. We'll mix it, clean it up a little bit to make it presentable. Now the toasted sesame seeds. I didn't toast mine, but you should. Seaweed seasoning and scallion. Can I order a bowl of spicy rice cakes without the rice cakes? Let's give it a taste and rate it 1 through 10. It tastes just like the Korean rice cake thing. Maybe even better. Super easy to make. Just a little bit too salty. I'm gonna give this a high score of 8.7. To be honest, I pulled this recipe out of my ass. I don't know if it'll work. But it's trying to mimic the mapa tofu noodle from Food Wars. Starting with a chunk of radioactive ground beef. I never say this, but I think it's too pink. 
We'll let it develop some color and flip it. Now it's time to break it all down. Make a little well in the center, add in some oil, and use it to fry up some of this Japanese spicy bean paste. This is what gives the mapo tofu that signature spicy flavor. Along with some garlic and the seasoning packet, we'll stir everything together. Cooking wine and some homemade high quality chicken stock. When it comes to a simmer, we'll thicken it with a slurry. One tablespoon of porn star and two tablespoons of water. Make sure you mix it well before pouring it in. When the mixture comes to a simmer again, it should be thickened up to a glossy sauce like this. Now all we have to do is pour it all over the cooked noodles, garnish it, and now you can't even tell the difference between this and the real dish. Well, the flavors are really good. Reminds you of mapo tofu, but in the shape of a noodle. I'm about to display emotion, so I'm sorry. From now on, I'll only use the Shin Ramen packet to season my burger patties. 9.1 out of 10. A little more effort, but worth it. This recipe is super simple. It's from a beauty creator. In addition to the ramen seasoning, we need half a can of coconut milk and some lime. I'm having a lot of trouble opening this can right now. What's going on with this milk? Maybe we need to turn it over and open it from the other side. Just grabbing a little bowl in case there's any leakage. You fucking donut. Okay, we just wasted a little bit of time. Now all we have to do is carefully let everything drip into the cup. It's a little slow. I wonder if we can pour it from the other side. Oh, what the f You know the craziest part of what's happening is I'm completely sober. We'll do about half a can of coconut milk in the bowl, as well as the juice from half a lime. As always, having the most trouble with the simplest things. We'll add the cooked noodles and seasoning packet into the coconut milk. Top it off with a little bit of noodle water and mix everything together. Now let's give it a taste and rate it 115. So I was hoping with the coconut milk, it would give it like a spicy Thai curry type of taste. But somehow it tastes like salty skin milk with googly worms. I'm gonna give it a 3 out of 10. To not cause any trouble, I'm not gonna show you who I got this recipe from. Because she's really popular. Our last recipe of the day is even easier than the previous one. It also involves a can, so hopefully it doesn't go wrong. So noodle in water and as usual, half of the seasoning packet. Once it starts boiling, we're gonna put this can in it. I've actually never had one of these Campbell's condensed soup, even though I cooked directly under one. Get the whole thing in there, and I didn't expect it to take so long to mix thoroughly. But sometimes you just gotta work extra hard to get that creamy finish. To be honest, maybe because I've been eating dairy product and shin ramen all day, but this does not look appetizing. I wonder how professional food critics stay unbiased when they're eating all the time. It's just like how you're more likely to get into a college if the admission is in a good mood. I'm a big fan of mushroom, so I like the flavor a lot. There's not a lot of complexity to it, it's just cream of mushroom soup with spicy powder in it. But it definitely feels more wholesome than just shin ramen broth, and more exciting than just cream of mushroom. So if you have cans of cream soup lying around, it's worth a try. That'll be all for today. Hopefully you learned something and get to try some of these recipes out. I have a lot of exciting content coming for the holiday season, and don't worry, they're all unrelated to the holidays. With everybody trying to force it down your throat, my channel could be the land of your sweet escape. I appreciate all of you sending me recipes for the past couple days. I've been collecting them. Can't wait to try them out. Alright, thank you.